of us, but I'll kind of go through the, the um, uh, basics of what we're going to be doing today. But this is class, um, I guess, CC68, Publish and Prosper, Prosper in Residential Applications. We do want to preface that we're going to be talking about commercial work as well. We just happen to start off with residential um, um, expertise with um, Jim and myself. And we're going to have, you know, myself, uh, we have Jim LaRue with LaRue Architects. We have Jorah Baldinger, a, photo a photographer, Diane Purcell, a publicist. And we have Rhonda Reinhart, which has graciously come here. She's an editor of Modern um, modern interiors um, uh, here in Dallas, and we did not have Carter um, Walker did not make it. She had a personal emergency with Western Art and Architecture, so she didn't make it today. So um, we're going to um, basically we have a copyright materials. I guess all this is the property of the AIA. I'm not quite sure. Um, we're going to talk about you know the publishing process. That's what we're going to get into. So we have a panel of people that we're going to be wanting to hear who's here. And it's one thing I want to make sure when we first start. You know who's in our audience today. Are, are you a firm practicing that want to know more about residential work? I mean, kind of see a show of hands, or if it's just, how about commercial work? And just generally the process of getting work published, are you really familiar with it? Or is it something like everyone's shaking their head no? So great, we got a great show for, for what's going on with that. Um, hopefully you'll learn some things like this today about what it, what's the process about getting noticed in publications, um, how a publicist can help you get yourself um, noticed and market your work. The importance of quality photography. We're going to talk a lot about this today and the impact that publications can do to your business. So we'll move on to who's here today. So I'm a, I practice in San Antonio. I work in the Texas Hill Country. I've been in business since 2004. We do residential and commercial work. Um, right, lately, it's been a lot of residential, primarily second homes, people moving in from out of state, wanting ranch houses, and then we do work in town as well. Um, we have Jim LaRue that's been in business since 1989. Is that right, Jim? And um, he is, he's had over 400 projects. Um, uh, been done since he started, and he's he's been in over 60 or more, is what I can tell, um, publications, and it's international publications. And we're going to talk talk to him about his process. Diane Purcell, she's a publicist. Actually, you are a collaborative publicity partner. Is that right, Diane? Yes. Right. So um, Diane is a publicist, and what does that mean? We're going to explain a little bit more about that. But she has her business called Through the Lens Management, and, and now our, your new logo is Diane, Diane Purcell. Purcell. DianePurcell.com, and T-shirts will be sold at the end of this. And so, um, but Diane, <laughs> Diane is a, a, is an amazing find. Um, Jim and I have both shared about what, what how our businesses have changed finding someone like her, and quite honestly, not knowing that she even existed prior to a couple of years ago. Um, and so she's going to share about her experience. We have Jorah Baldinger. He is an architect turned architectural photographer. He is, was a practicing architect in San Antonio for many years. We found a relationship when I moved back from LA and stayed in contact. And he, he's been an amazing find um, for Jim and I. And so he's going to sh share about architectural photography. And then we have you know Rhonda here, Ryan, Reinhardt, an editor in chief with, with Modern Luxury Interiors. She's going to share her, pers her perspective of what it takes to get noticed and what it takes to get past her desk and into a magazine. So with that, um, we're going to talk about the architect story. The whole convention is about the story. So one thing I wanted to kind of share is that when I started my firm in 2004, I left without a portfolio of work, really. I just got started. I didn't have anything. And I had no clue what it took to get published. I mean, every firm I worked with had a marketing department. They had these people that worked in the back corner. They stayed really late, and they, they did all this stuff with photography, and they did all these things writing, but I had no clue what it took. My honest perspective about the publication world was you won an award, you got noticed, and then you got in a magazine somehow. That's, you know, I pretty much, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's Texas architect, architectural record, progressive architecture, if it's still around. Um, it's th Those are the things that I thought were the important aspects about being published, mm -hmm. is just you start that way. So I had no idea what it took. So um, as we went through and started doing our own work, I only had work that I had done myself for my own houses in California, for work that I had done, you know, sort of on the side, but nothing, I would say, print worthy, nothing that I could take to the next level to get, come on in. Um, you know, to actually get garner the attention, but again, I didn't know the process of getting it done. We worked for many years, about four or five years, and we finally landed a project that was from a client from Chicago, and they wanted to build this really substantial ranch home on the Guadalupe River, and so we had our first real project. We were doing smaller projects for models, additions, things like that, and we were doing some school work as well. But we had this opportunity to do a project that was about 7,000 square feet on the Guadalupe River, we finished it. We actually got to build this project in my office, and we were really proud of it. And I thought, this is it. 
we're going, the awards prog program is coming up. It's, it's like a month in advance. We hired a photographer in San Antonio. I asked around, who would you hire? And we went out and learned what it took to get photography. Again, I had no clue. This was architectural boot camp. We went out for a week and prepped this house from pressure washing the roof, from manicuring the lawn, to getting furniture right. Um, the owners hadn't moved into it yet, so we had total control of the property, and it was gonna be a two-day shoot. Again, I didn't know what it was gonna take. I have never been more exhausted in my life after we finished this, this photo shoot. I just had no idea there was so much effort and time put into it. So we finished, we got the photography. I was really excited about it. Um, and we ended up right here with this, the shot they called the money shot, the night shot that I was really, you know, like I didn't know that this was an important photograph to have this big sort of magazine spread image. So I just went along with the process. So we entered the design award. I said, this is it, right? We're gonna win our first design award with this thing. We're really excited about it and nothing happened. We went to the awards program, nothing came out of it and I was really deflated. I thought, well, what's the point of this? What do I do now? We entered it again to the state award, nothing happened. And so I thought, okay, where, what's gonna happen with this? Well, what happened was my photographer had a relationship. He had a relationship with someone I didn't know existed, um, happened to be Diane Purcell, and she reached out one day and said, Craig, would you like to get published? And I said, yes. Her first response was, do you know what that means? I said, I have no clue on how, what the process is to do it. So she went through the process of give me your story, give me your history, give me the photography. It's not just the photography. There's a whole backstory I need to know about you. And we ended up right here on the cover of a magazine. So here we are, we, we started off four years into our business, we had this, and this magazine ended up all over the state. Um, Lux Magazine wasn't regional like it is now, it was statewide, and so it was in every hotel, it was in every airport, and people to this day walk into my office going, I saw this you know, six years ago, and I've been always interested in this, this kind of house. So I was really excited about it, but we did go and continue thinking this was the important part, design awards, and we kept striking out over and over and over again. But what, what did happen is that when we did enter it, you know, Texas Architect was watching what was being submitted. They called me and said, we would like to write an article on this. I said, great. And then they hired Dror Baldinger to write the article. And so Dror actually came out and, sorry, jumped ahead. Dror came and wrote this article. And so here, here it is, I'm hooked. It's like, wow, every project now, I know the process to end up on a magazine. And I'm thinking, I'm going, this is what is gonna happen. I did not work with Diane after that magazine. I actually, this is the 2009 recession, right? We didn't have a whole lot of money. I said, I'm just gonna do it myself. So what did follow up with something, which I show the shark images here, was the pay to advertise and the pay to publish program. The account executives just swooped in. You know, They saw the magazine, they signed me up to a year long contract. And I thought, I was flattered. I was thinking, great, you want my work. Well, it really just turned out they wanted my money is what it seemed like was when it was coming through the whole, the whole year. I didn't get much from this. This whole year, this is a very substantial investment. I didn't see much work at our phone calls coming, but I do have to preface that. It was the recession. No one was building anything. But I, you know, I'd have an inquiry every once in a while, but it was more like how much are a set of plans and you know the things that we struggle with from time to time about is this gonna be the right type of client. So that was my story of getting into it. But at that long that way, we continued to photograph. I was I was hiring, you know, we were finishing work. I did, you know, start photographing myself work because I couldn't pay for the photographer. And I started saying, I'm learning just enough when we we're in a photo shoot to say, what are you doing? I'm gonna buy the equipment. I'm gonna do, you know, do what you do. And then this is obviously drawers work. And we just continued to build a body of work, but nothing happened during this period. No magazines. I didn't have an outlet um, to, to find anything. And so in 2014, I got a phone call from Diane saying, are you ready to get published? She, she had been always nudging me year to year, saying, are you ready to do it? And I said, Yes, what's it gonna take? She says, well, send me everything you got. So I had sent her 10, 12 projects, and she called me and said, okay, are you ready? Both feet in the boat, you ready to go? I said, yes. And she goes, okay, here's what we have to do. I'm listening. She goes, we have to re-photograph everything. <laughs> now, I had my WTF moment right there. I paused for a second and said, what do you mean? She says, it's not, the, the, the projects are good, the photography is good, but it's not great. It's not a body of work that we can get the attention of editors with. Some of it's photographed by me, some of it's photographed with different photographers, but there's not a strong running story. So I listened. 
um, it was hard because now I had to get back in every single one of these projects that people had moved in. I had to get permission. I had to get them out of the house because we're invasive. When we move in, we're moving furniture all over the place. And so it was a very tough first six months of this. But the end result of it was, it was amazing, is that we started getting photography that I could use many different ways, from my website to submissions to um, magazines. And so this is a lot of work that George did on my own house. But we were able to get the attention and ultimately, you know, end up with, this is just a snapshot, in less than probably 12 months, we had something like 25 different, or 22 to 25 different magazines in one year's effort. Um, same kind of work that I'd been working with before with no attention on my own, and we ended up at this place. And so this is the, the starting part of the story that we said, okay, now how did we do this? We're going to get into more depth. So, Jim? Yeah. One thing I want to mention, though, before Jim talks, when you handle the submission process, you have to be very careful about going to your priority pick first and not blasting the project out there. You have to respect where you're going and who you're going to first. And then move down to the non-competitive markets. You've got consumer markets, you've got your uh, design industry, you have your business industry and the commercial and so forth. And you really do have to be careful about blasting out and overlapping and respect the editors that you're going to first. And then that's why you pick a strategy on before you show up to even shoot the job. So there's multiple non-competitive markets. If you just keep that in mind, that's what's important. But you must not step on toes. It's very important to be respectful and to submit accordingly, or you'll burn bridges. OK, just wanted to good, good. stick that there. Uh, thanks for coming. I know it's football Saturday. There's a lot of stuff we'd rather be doing, but we appreciate you guys taking the time to come out. Uh, so my, I started my firm in uh, 1989, it's been a while. I have a eight man firm in Austin, Texas. We do strictly residential. We do architecture and interiors. Uh, please. So there I am starting out baffled and confused. <laughs> I got no work. I got no projects to show. So I uh, had some relationships from my previous employers with some builders. So my start in the market was by doing builder parade homes. Uh, we did some builder specs, we did parades, uh, and that, that really gave me the chance to meet a lot of people. So we got a little local press, we met a lot of real estate agents, builders, uh, and, that, and that worked pretty good. So for, when you've been in business 25 years, you can summarize big chunks. So in that first seven or eight years, that really worked pretty well. I call it old school publishing, because there wasn't any internet, there, wasn't, there were very few publications as an outlet. Uh, and, and that worked pretty well for a long while. This house came around in 2000, uh, 2000 early 2000. Uh, good story, great client. So we said, you know, how are we gonna, we gotta find a way to get published. So we, we submitted this to the AIA for a local homes tour uh, exhibition. So we joined the AIA homes tour, got this house on it. It was great. We met a lot of people, I met some new clients, and I met a writer from Southern Living uh, during the home store. And she published the, the project in 2003. They liked it so much, Southern Lemming came back around in 2004 and published it again. Mm -hmm. So we uh, go, okay, there's something to this home store thing. So we do it again in 2005. This is in town, or sort of an urban infill kind of a thing. And uh, we, we got a lot of nice press again. We were, we were able to uh, get this published a little bit. And uh, uh, and I mean, it was a good strategy. So we moved from the parades to the AI homes tour. Uh, this is 2010 where we did another homes tour. Uh, so we're spacing these out. If you guys haven't done home AI homes tour and you have it in your market, I would encourage you to do it. It's great exposure. It's a, it's a difficult for a small firm. I know this doesn't speak to commercial, but it, but it's a, it, it's worth it. I mean, really just to increase your brand, increase your market presence. Uh, and and have some real great face time with a lot of different people, contractors, especially real estate community, publishers. Uh, so from this, we we uh, we've never advertised. So in 2006, we go. You know what? We're not we're not getting published. It's it's not working. So I figure out on my own genius way that advertising is the solution to getting published. If I buy space in their magazine, they're gonna publish me. Well, they didn't, but. This shot, this one shot, we hired and we switched photographers. We got a new guy, and this, you know, it's 
uh, sort of a thing that we do, sort of a hill country, soft contemporary thing. Well, it spoke to a lot of people at the time. And in my market in 2006, it was Tuscan, all Tuscan. So this, this look was a little bit different. And this, this photograph, even to this day, we still have people come and they come to interview us and they bring this image. So uh, that, that advertising thing sort of sold me on that. In 08, we're still advertising. We're doing our own ads in-house. And one of our guys says, you need Diane. And I don't know if we came through the photographer or where it came from, photographer oh, okay. from Coles. So uh, uh, we, they go, you need a publicist. And I, okay, if you say so, I don't even know what that means. It's like a Hollywood thing. So I'm going to get this publicist <laughs> and she's going to help me. And it's she did. A bad word. It is. <laughs> so I have Diane and we sort of, she, but together we uh, re sort of rethink our advertising, this little sort of three shot thing isn't working. We revamp our website, which we had just started two years earlier. It's kind of weak. Uh, so we upgrade the website and then we get better photographers and better shoots and then we cut Diane loose. And so we start getting published. Uh, so 2010 comes around and the economy tanks, same story as Craig. And so I'm gonna pull out. I'm like, Diane, I'm not gonna do this anymore. It's too much money. Uh, and she goes, no, look, just stay the course. We're going to get more photos. We're going to get more shoots, upgrade your image, uh, revamp your website again. And the, all of these efforts in the middle of a downturn, I mean, this is 2009. Mm -hmm. We're, uh, we're short staffed, but all of a sudden we're, we're getting published. We're picking up clients. The fees are going up, uh, we're adding staff. Everybody else is dying and we're adding stuff because we have Diane. So, uh, in, uh, shortly thereafter, I find drawer. So I'm on the internet and I keep seeing these images that I love this guy's work and I'm, go I'm gonna get this guy. So we bring drawer in and we do our first shoot with the drawer. And, and at about this time, we're also redoing our website for the third time, this time a major investment on a new website, which I think is unbelievably important. Uh, and together with drawer and Diane, we go out, we learn how to do a shoot. You have to learn to do a shoot. You can't just send them out and turn them loose. So Diane taught us how to do it. We learned a lot from drawer. And these are some of the covers that we've gotten recently. So I'll give you the, the bottom line is for the first, first 15 years of my business, I was published maybe 15 times. So once a year, even though we weren't published much at all in the first five years, so maybe twice a year, since I plugged in with Diane and Drawer in the last five years, we have 54 publications, <coughs> seven covers. We're magazines, books, trade journals, uh, this, cover right here is Mexico. Uh -huh. Beautiful cover. We're not sure what the story says, but it's a great cover. So, I it, it mean, and it's, the reach is incredible. So, uh, we're seeing stuff in Canada now. We have a publication in China. Uh, I don't know how that helps my business, but, but uh, to move from 12 or 15 publications over a 15-year period to get 50-something in the last five has been incredible. So, what that's really done for us is it's, we've got better clients. We're now in control of the interviews. We are cherry picking these clients because we're looking at it going, we're only going to pick them if we can publish them. And uh, the fees are up. I, it, it has changed our business. So we are true believers. So how do we get there, gentlemen? <coughs> who, who helps us out? Pass this down to Diane. Let her hey, talk yo, about Diane. what she did, what she does. Well, they want me to tell my story. <laughs> my story started with Greg Hursley. I don't know if you know the Hursley name. Timothy Hursley out of Arkansas, who's also an architecture photographer. But when I came onto the scene in the late 80s, I was literally out of university in a camera shop setting up my darkroom, and I met Greg. And I didn't know that there were photographers that even photographed buildings at that time. He hired me on the spot, and he, and along with uh, Paul Bardigy, who's also a photographer, still uh, shooting, Greg is now retired, uh, really were my mentors in teaching me how to document a project properly from the front door to the back. You really have to be very careful about your visuals and make sure you don't cut yourself short because if there's not, you need to think about the spread itself. You've got to have verticals if you want cover consideration at all. You've got to not miss the master bedroom if you want a full feature. You have to make sure that everything is told. And so that's what they did. I, I, I was, this was back in the film days, if you remember, four by five films. So I caught my, I find myself in a lot of public bathrooms loading film holders. 
and sweeping floors and really assisting uh, and managing their imagery and the licensing of it and so forth. And so once Greg was pretty much slowing down, I took his, the management of him along with Paige Sutherland Page. You remember that? You know that name now, well, Page is that. They handed me all their reproduction. I did all their printing, all the Photoshop once we went digital. And that's basically how I started my business was in a camera shop being hired by an architectural photographer assisting. So I've been on that side of the fence and now have done a 360 and work strictly for firms. T teaching them and helping them how to record a project. You've got to have a plan in place before you walk onto the premises. Your photographer, I really encourage you to build a relationship today with one or two, but really one so that your visuals flow because you, as you know, there are very different styles and today Jorah will talk about this. It's very different than the old sheet film day. Um, you're gathering information up front and you go back and you put the images together. That is key. And who's doing that? Hopefully the photographer. Um, in many cases, I think that's where photographers are failing today is they don't understand how to document the story. They don't understand their client. They're shooting for too many people under one contract that can also be conflicting. And where are you taking the project? What are you going to do with that project? Are you going to enter design awards? Is it a remodel? You must have befores, literally almost in the same spot um, and so forth. So building and collaborating a team to support you is going to the best, it will do you the best in the end because reaching editors today they're having, they get thousands of projects in. You really need to be careful how you do it and you need to do it consistently. So started in the bathroom loading film, now work for firms today, have done digital scanning myself. I know Photoshop, been on that side of the fence. Now on this side, helping people like yourself, even individuals getting out there. So don't let the word publicist scare you. <laughs> Good stories in place, uh, being loyal and committed to them, not submitting projects out to blasting projects out, respect them, uh, and build relationships with them. It's hard to get to some of them. It depends on the publication. I have writers that I've worked with throughout the years that also uh, I work side by side with that take projects to editors as well. Yes. Correct, yes. You really want to give them something already in place, a story in place. Be prepared, have your submission complete. Does that include not only the composite, but also the writer? Well, you just, you need to give them enough to basically, I step back, I hand them enough to, so that they were, we're looking at editorial calendars, which come out uh, for most magazines. And if you can plan ahead and position yourself based on the nature of your project, giving them as much as you can is always helpful. But they will interview. Does the same thing go for digital conversations? Correct. We're going to get to a question and answer, but we got a lot of information we want to make sure we get to. It's totally That's fine. okay. We, we, we encourage you to. We, we appreciate yes. That. But we want to get into the photography process as well. About this is going to be very educational, yeah. Sure. I hope so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am an architect. I, I don't practice at the moment, but I did uh, practice for uh, in San Antonio for 20 years with uh, Marlon Mark. I left Marlon Mark about uh, four years ago uh, so uh, to start my photography studio. So I've been very close to design. I was design principals, principal there. So I apply the principles of design to photography, which helps me a lot uh, in the process. So let me, let's go for a minute uh, through architectural photography. 
I would say that it's really the most important thing that you need to do after getting the project, executing it properly to the client's satisfaction, and then you have to document it. And the reason is that uh, most people will experience your work through photography, not through actually walking through your building. And I would argue that actually photography <laughs> creates the icons that we associate with architecture and, uh, and not, not vice versa, again, because most of us will experience famous buildings that we do not have access to or did not travel to through imagery. And uh, there are many examples from Le Corbusier's work to Falling Waters to, um, to the Seagram building. When you have an image of, the Se say, the Seagram building, you have an image that comes to your mind. It's not that you necessarily have been there or walked through the building. And also, in, uh, in today's world, it's really the, the value of photography is immeasurable because you don't know who's looking at your work. And it's not like in the old days, again, that uh, you went to an interview with, uh, and uh, showed your work. Today, your work is worldwide. Anybody, anywhere can see your work, and you never know who it is and who is looking at that work. And most likely, it is potential client that heard about you and wants to see your work. So, and they will evaluate your work based on what they see because they have never met you. So seeing your work comes way before you even have a chance to say one word to a potential client. So uh, that why, that's why today it's ever more so important than, than before. Um, Architectural photography is really visual, visual communication. So it has to be deliberate and purposeful. You have to know what your message is and tailor the photography to it. Um, it it's self-explanatory. You, you want to have your work noticed, and it's only going to get noticed with good photography, not when the colors are off, the perspective is off, the lines converge, and so on and so forth. Uh, because I remember from practice that an owner will never value your work more than you do. And they, if you value your work and you show it professionally and you show it seriously, that is how the owner will value your work. If they see that you don't care very much about it, they do not care very much about it. It's whether their own work or work you did for somebody else. Uh, the purpose of photography is for also is to, uh, to persuade, to convince a client, and you can read the rest, and to set their mind at rest that you are a capable person, that you have work that they want. Uh, and and what, what makes persuasive photography? Uh, this is a photograph by one of my heroes. That's Nick Merrick from Hedrick Blessing in Chicago. And so you see here, it's clear, it's intentional, it's confident, and it's expressive. And most importantly, it's selective in what it wants to show. Architectural photography is a means for you to engage people in, with your work. And just because our eye has peripheral vision and you see from edge to edge, it does not mean that you go to a space with a wide angle uh, lens and boom, this is what you shoot. Because this is not really what you want to show. Selective images, purposeful images will get you much further than uh, spread out views. Now, the, the one-point perspective is a little bit different. It's a little easier to control the wide-angle view with the one-point perspective than a uh, two-point perspective. Uh, that's the Briscoe Museum uh, in San Antonio. Uh, the way I go about it, I first of all, I analyze the space, and I try to convey the feel and the structure. Of, uh, and here is an example of, of how I go about it. It's a, it's a house in Austin, and it's very obvious what happens in here. You see the piece coming from the top. Point out that it's not neon on the house. That's your okay. work that you're doing. 
that's right. That, that's just guidelines. You see, so I analyze what we're seeing here. This is very strong element coming in here. The pool coming around in there. Okay, so it starts to give me a clue how to compose the image. I love the one point perspective. You already know this. So the image is, is split in two in here. That kind of uh, hugging action here really contains this space. This becomes secondary. This is not the main event in here. This is the main event in here. And again, you see the horizon line here, the, this, the rule of thirds, which you have to take in somewhat with a grain of salt, but you see the underlayment, the underlying structure of each photograph, and you know from design whether it's you know, well or not, it's there and it creates a foundation of the uh, photograph. Uh, planning the shoot, it doesn't happen by mistake. It, there needs to be, a, it's a complete process. Uh, if you can visit the project with a photographer, this is very beneficial. Explain the design intent. Although Jul Julius Schulman did not want the architect there, he wanted to actually show the architect how the work is seen uh, by somebody else, and it's a valid point too, but I think it's really good to visit the, the uh, building when I'll explain your design intent, because as much as I'd like to, I'm not a mind reader, so I will get maybe 80% of the shots you have in mind, but maybe not all of them, and that's true, I think, for all photographers. And it's also interesting to know uh, what was the design process, what you have in mind, what you're most proud of, and how many images do you think we would need to cover the, uh, the, process, the building in here? By the way, in here, that's, that's a project for Overland Partner. And you see again the, oops, sorry, the, the structure of this photograph. It's split right in the middle, build versus, I mean, build versus nature, so to speak. Again, at the third point, you start seeing the layering of the, uh, of the composition and of the design here and the composition. So uh, I think it's very beneficial to have a floor plan, to have a site plan. Today, you know, you can punch in the, uh, the address and get from different apps the sun rotation around the, uh, the building so it's easier to plan the shoot. Uh, I think a staff member is always beneficial. I do not work with an assistant for cost reasons. But if there is a uh, somebody from the architectural office, uh, they can be very beneficial to the process. Uh, architectural photography today is composed of two parts. There is a field work and studio work. The field work is essentially collecting data. And that's a little bit, you can see here my setup, uh, camera on a tripod, of course and a laptop on a tripod. So everything is tethered to a laptop and you can see immediately the, the, uh, the shot being considered. This is the opportunity to collaborate. <coughs> now, again, this is today in the field, it's data collection. You can see in here, oops, sorry. Uh, this is a, the program I'm using called Capture One. It's from Denmark, it's an excellent program. A lot of photographers are using Lightroom. It's kind of a competing uh, program. I think Capture One, being a raw processor, uh, processes the images a bit better. All the images are raw. In other words, they're not JPEGs or TIFF. It's just raw images. And then the raw converter takes it to uh, TIFF or JPEG. Uh, so there are a lot of different consideration. There's a lot of movement here, movement there. Um, it's more so in residential, less, less in commercial work. Uh, and then the second part is the studio work. And this is where really the image is made because all images today are composites. And you can see here actually some of the layers that take to compose one image because the dynamic range of the camera is not the dynamic range of our eye. We make adjustments to light and shadows, the camera sees either this or that, and maybe a little bit in, in between. So uh, that's why bracketing is still a 
extremely valuable part of the process. Although today also the programs are so sophisticated that you can bring a lot of detail from shadows and you can really take down the highlights so areas do not take uh, so bright. But there is a lot of editing that goes into it. Uh, you'll never get a sky showing like that in a single shot. This is where the bracketing comes on. And all you can, all you see here, all this black and whites, these are called masks. So they, you reveal and conceal parts of images that are layered underneath. This takes more time than the time in the field. So if we are all day in the, in the field, so to speak, it's, a, it's more than that making those images. Um, but you have to have it, otherwise uh, you're missing highlights or shadows. There's also uh, intensifying colors or highlighting colors and so on and so forth. That's where the images are made in the studio, not like in the old days where you had to get it in, in camera because the opportunities were much lesser. Um, but you have to remember that Photoshop is just a tool and it's not gonna do the work for you. The vision is still with the photographer and you have to see this. It's true that you have to see the shot in your mind. When you set up, you have to have an idea what it's gonna look like at the end and then you collect the information that you need to achieve the final image. So I know that I need to get this, 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 or that, and then I will put it all together. I also am a stickler for sharpness, so what it, uh, the tethering allows me is to blow to image to 100%, and then I go through the entire image, make sure that everything is in focus. Now again, the camera is not our eye, and it will, Sometimes things in the foreground, depending where you depend on where you're focusing, will not be as sharp as the distance. So I will expose for the near distance to the middle, and then to the distance, and then combine all together. It's called focus stacking. So the point is, you can't actually believe exactly photographs because they're all manipulated to some degree. Um, of course, there's a difference between cheating and manipulating. I think that focus stacking is not cheating, for example. So, uh, did I miss one? I got yeah, here we go. Okay, you're speeding me up. Yes, I am. The music, <laughs> the music is starting to play. So the equipment. Uh, this is uh, one I'm getting ready to go to a shoot. Um, I try to actually travel light. Thanks. Okay, now, the cameras. There are no bad cameras today. All the cameras are fantastic. Lenses, I think, play a bigger role. There are good lenses and not so. I use uh, Canon equipment, so these are all lens, L lenses and tilt shift. You have to have tilt shift uh, lenses for architectural photography because the trick is in where the positioning of the camera. Uh, I always, I never go much higher than, than chest and then shift up. That's how you keep the floor the way you, we see it and not tilt it. I go back a little bit. I still am in control here. Okay, so uh, tripod, have to have tripod, laptop, and light modifiers. Okay, this is a big debate. Like natural light versus supplemental light. 99% of my photographs are now natural light because you cannot beat natural light. Uh, also, what natural light allows you is to model the space much better. Uh, the color temperature, you don't have to play with color temperature of different light sources. And there is a tendency to, in architecture to the architectural photography to go to the natural look, the, the less superficial. And that is all in... Uh, also, natural light can be very, very interesting in the transition from light to shadow. I don't have... Actually, that was uh, natural light. There is not a, there is no artificial light in here at all. This is all natural light. Uh, actually, you can see I turn off the, the supplement, the the uh, light fixtures, and it's just beautiful light. You cannot beat uh, natural light. Okay, uh, I am speeding in here. So, 
Now, the photographer's most, exper uh, most important equipment will be your eye and your experience. Um, because during the day, you know, architectural design is all about decision making. You make thousands of decisions in the process of design. Uh, you make two wrong decisions, the client is all over you. But they forget that you made thousands of decisions in the process. The same is with architectural photography. In a 12-hour day, you make thousands of decisions. Uh, what will look good and what won't, won't uh, look good. Uh, this is an interesting quote uh, because we are... Photo photograph is an illusion. It's not a reality, whether we believe it or not. And that's the proof of it. Of it. This, is a pro, this is a Bass Pro Shop in Round Rock in the middle of a parking lot. So again, with experience and knowing how to show the project that does not put it necessarily in the context of a parking lot and really transforms it. And that's the power of photography is to transform projects. I didn't cheat here. It's all there. I didn't make up anything. It's just in the positioning of the camera and how to show the, uh, the building in the best way. So obviously we have a lot of, um, I mean, when we get the word from um, Roar and we're working with Diane, I mean, the process of working, what we do internally, I think, you know, we have a, a sort of a, a, the internal office working with all this information, how to get ready for it. So Jim, if you could kind of walk through the process of uh, the publication process in your office. Okay, so from this is from the architect's perspective. So we're, we're uh, you know, we think step one in this deal is get a publicist. I know that's going to be a, a stretch for, for some folks, but that access to those editors and those publications is something you know, you, we just don't have. Uh, and and, and it's, it's not just the access that you're getting to. You're getting this experience about maximizing your photo shoots and planning your our advertising and marketing budgets. We always sit down at the beginning of the year, we count our shoots, we think about what that's going to cost, what's that going to cost us from a staff pan, uh, standpoint. And uh, we then work through that with, with Diane and, uh, and really make sure we're maximizing those dollars, whether it's advertising the photo shoots or both. Uh, then, you know, you just heard from, you know, one of the best photographers I've ever met. And uh, so we think it's, you know, it's obviously, it's incredibly important. Um, you know, what we liked about uh, Drawer 2 is that you find a photographer who loves what you do. Uh, drawer, when he comes out, you know, he has an enthusiasm for our architecture. So I think that that gets everybody that's there in the shoot, my staff, uh, myself, uh, we all sort of get, you know, amped up about what we're doing. So let, just let him do what he does and, uh, and, and you'll, you'll be the better for it. Uh, the, George spoke to some of this, the planning. Uh, we send him the documents. We, you know, we have, we have a shoot coming up next week, actually, and we're, we're manipulating the schedule because it looks like, you know, we're, gonna, we're not going to get the light that we want on the day that we're planning it. So you need a little flexibility there. Uh, you know, so you got to get, a, you got to really get good with your client. Uh, you know, you take care of them. We send them to dinner. Or sometimes we send them to a spa for the day. Just get, <laughs> get them out of the way, and uh, and it'll be more meaningful for you. So also, this is part of that working with the photographer deal. So there's drawer under the camera, and there I am confused about exactly what it is that he's shooting. <laughs> but as part of that, let him do what he does. Uh, also, bring your own camera, shoot away. You know, get your shots that you can use in-house. You, you don't want to put those on your on the internet, but but you can certainly use them with your clients. Uh, and you sort of, you know, stealing a little from your photographer there and looking through his lens. So go ahead and take those shots, and, and they're they're really helpful. We find them very helpful with marketing. Uh, also, can we go back one real quick? If the client's gone, you need to be able to run this sophisticated lighting system. So drawer's going to want you to be able to manipulate the lighting. So you need to get a quick bus in the lighting controls. Uh, and then uh, Emily in our office who runs our shoots, she wore her Pradas. Now she wears tennis shoes. So be sure <laughs> you're out there in those tennis shoes all day. It's a long day of moving stuff around. It's an exhausting day <laughs> you're walking around. You're walking in and out and in and out. That lamp's just not right. This thing is just not right. Can you take this out? It's absolutely exhausting work. To, but obviously you're letting drawer do his job. So he doesn't have to go do that. So supporting him is... is yeah, you're supporting drawer. You're You'll supporting. see it in some of our later shots where drawer where we manipulated the, the deck chairs for hours, it seems. <laughs> uh, also on the day of the shoot, you know, these are some other things, you know, uh, we brought in or we, you know, help compose a photograph. We like entourage. I like color. I think drawer likes color. We, you know, when that's sitting in a magazine, they'll, it will pause people. So... What about furniture and bringing in things? You know, we do, you know, that's a good point. And, you know, that's sort of why you like the client to be gone because sometimes you need to rearrange their furniture because it doesn't really 
is it the way you had intended it when you did the architecture so or it enhances the shot it's, for us as architects we don't want it to be about the furniture we also do interiors and and if we shoot another shot then we might be looking at it from a different point of view but uh, we'll bring in our own art occasionally uh, we do bring in flowers vases sometimes I've brought in, in a truckload of patio furniture because we have a shot with no patio furniture uh, we're also shooting you know this is part of Diane's thing about shoot shoot for the shoot for the cover the center shot ended up ended up being a cover on Veta so uh, and you can see they're all vertical we do a lot of full page ads so you need these vertical shots for these full page ads I think it is important I mean the, the stylist there is some shots um, we'll bring a stylist in they'll come in early that might bring in some other bedding I mean it, it, you don't want to have anything that doesn't want to catch Rhonda's attention I mean if there's anything in there that's negative it's not going to show well you you really do have to think through the eyes of an editor are they really going to like this and my wife and I have collected period pieces all our life and so I have a trailer that goes with me on a photo shoot and drawers always in any Wesley chairs or any Barcelona chair there is staging that goes along because a lot of our ranch homes the furniture is eclectic pieces that have been collected in the garage and they bring it you know it, to this neat little retreat and it's not exactly going to make a great shot and a lot sometimes it's really hard if the owner is in the property really hard because you're moving their furniture all over the place sometimes we'll have it all out in the front yard I mean it's I want to take a photograph of that day where we have to bring everything out and, and supplement because a lot of times it's just too full and we've got to thin it out yeah the importance of animals yeah you know everybody loves their pets uh, so that my the client loves this shot I don't know if the media cares for it but but she liked it so we shot it and uh, we think you know we think it's important and you'll see you'll see them in a lot of our images I would just say know where you're gonna go uh, with your photos and if there's a lifestyle slant definitely include the pets yeah, people and pets nice. in motion whatever uh, it is a home so so this is a uh, this is an image where we shot we love this beautiful limestone curving wall here and we shot it in its sort of purest form and then we said well, look this is also a great shot for an ad we're gonna run an ad so then we brought the owner's car around and uh, placed it and then reshot it and, and you can see if you were looking at the magazine uh, the one on the right is is just it gets your attention so uh, uh, it works for us as an ad uh, uh, the money shot uh, drawer spoke to some of this this is really important and drawer plans this shot all day this this scene was planned early in the day and then he knew when he wanted to shoot it timing wise once while well, we still have some sunlight and then and then uh, right at right at dusk and uh, uh, some publications prefer night some publications prefer day shot so you know, having a photographer to know that. Those are the deck chairs that we spent hours moving around, so the drawer got it exactly the way he wanted it. Uh, this vertical horizontal thing, we've talked about that already. Uh, some full page stuff. Uh, it also gives the publisher a little more opportunity to do composition work in their layout. So the more of a variety you can have there, the, the more meaningful it will be for them. Uh, there's that night shot thing again. And then this is part of that edit. Just edit it down, clean it up, focus the photograph uh, some of the Photoshop stuff you know sometimes you got a high line or the neighbor's trash can or you, you know we, we're gonna take that out of the image it's not doing anything for anybody so uh, what about when you get images you're not just exactly happy with uh, well from drawer that's not ever happened well, <laughs> happen yeah you know sure you get images you go oh, it's not you know that's not what I thought it was gonna be and, and that's fine and sometimes we just sort of shelve those I mean, they're fine they're fine in-house uh, they're fine for explaining an idea or a concept to a client, but, but it's not something we want to put in the front of the publisher. And, and certainly, even on your own website, you know, don't don't take those average shots and, and put them out there. Because like George says, once they're there, they're there. And, and, and it may have a negative impact on your work. From our perspective, we've actually, I mean, you maybe only have the budget for a one-day shoot. I know there's an additional image. You only have that one nighttime shot. You've gone all day long, and maybe the sun wasn't exactly right. And then I'll say, drawer, can we get back out there in a couple of days, just for a couple hours in the evening, just to recapture a different perspective that I could not capture in that one day. You only have so much time in one day. Nearly every house needs two days, but it's, there's a cost in the budget. You have to work with it. So it's just it's those things that we'll come back and shoot just one shot, just to be able to supplement it because it helps tell that story. Yeah, you got to tell the story. Uh, and then now you're ready to publish so just load all these great images up now we're gonna send this stuff back to Diane and let her you know do her magic uh, also when you get these images you got you're all excited and you've just finished your shoot don't take them all and throw them on your website just bleed out a couple of images 
hold back some really good stuff so the publishers, the publishers kind of like to be surprised by some secret images, also clients. And then you can bleed those images onto your website over a period of time. So what that allows you to do is keep your website really fresh. So we'll get 15 or 20 images out of a shoot, and it may take us six months to bleed all those onto the website. So uh, you can get out a lot out of it. This is a, one of our writers, a great way to get your foot in the door. You know, she, she, we met her, she, we love to interview with her. Uh, and then we have some publications that we really look to, Modern Luxury Lux, Western Art and Architecture, to, uh, that we think does a nice job of showcasing what we're trying to do. If they have events, go there. Uh, and you know, it's all, and again, it's all about the story. Uh, I think Craig's made the point well. And if you do all that, this is what will happen to you. <laughs> well, Rhonda, um, what, I mean, of everything that we've been talking about, I mean, how do we get your attention to make it in a magazine? What is it you're looking for when, we, when, you, when you first, someone like Diane sends it to you, or if we send it directly to you ourselves, what's the normal process of you, of, you know, getting work and examining? Um, the normal process is I will take it however it comes. So, um, you know, a lot of times I work with someone like Diane who um, has clients that she's trying to pitch. Um, sometimes architects and designers pitch me directly. Um, sometimes freelance writers pitch me projects. Um, sometimes I just meet people while I'm out and about and they start telling me about their house and I say, oh, well, I'd love to see it and then you know, maybe it gets in the magazine. So there's no um, hard and fast rule on that. I, anybody can reach out to me. Um, I will say that working with someone like Diane just makes everything so much easier for everybody because she knows what I'm looking for. Um, she's familiar with the magazine, which is a, which is That's key. a big part of know this. Know where you're you need, going. You need to know your audience for sure. Mm -hmm. um, there's a magazine for everybody out there. I mean, you're not gonna see something in country living that you would see in modern luxury interior sexes or lux, more than likely. Um, so you just need to be cognizant of, of who you're sending your projects to. Um, you know, we have, we look for a local connection, obviously, because we're a Texas publication. So um, we also look for luxury appeal it doesn't necessarily mean the project has to be super expensive, but um, there needs to be some sort of high-end element to it. Maybe it's just the reputation of the homeowner or the designer or something. Um, we touched on this, one of you touched on this earlier, but full projects are, are ideal, um, not just one or two rooms. I, we can't really do much with that. I mean, there are times when um, things like that will work, for instance, the cover of our current issue is um, a kitchen, because it's the kitchen and bath issue. So there are three great kitchens and three great bathrooms in there that don't have a full house attached to them. So there are times when those things work. But for the most part, if you're looking for to get placed, get a big feature placed, you need to be able to, we, you need to be able to show me the whole house. Um, even the outdoors too, that's also important, especially for architects. Right. So yeah. what about photography? I mean, are you, how important is it for what you guys see? Obviously, there's, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about it. I mean, we've all shared about our expertise. But what happens when someone directly sends it to you and it's just not there? I mean, maybe the house has a strong, maybe three or four images, but not five or six yeah. or eight. If that happens, more than likely, nothing's going to happen with that project. Um, there's just not the time and the budget and the thing, you know. When there are so many good things that are complete, just right there, ready to go. Story in place. Story in place, yeah. And um, someone talked about this earlier. Do not feel like you have to write the story of the house. I mean, we will do that. I just need to know major details. Who is the architect? Who is the designer? Who lives there? Where is the house? What, what are the main, um, what's interesting about it? What are the major elements? More of an outline. Yeah. What would make somebody want to know about this? particular house. What but, about photography? Do you send out people to shoot a project or um, do you wait for it to be brought to you? It's a little bit of both. Um, there's a project, well, I'll start with photography Photography first. Um, if there's great photography, that's wonderful because we can often um, use those very images in the magazine. We've worked with Drawer before. Um, we will shoot a project 
Um, there's one I'm trying to get into now before the holidays <laughs> and <laughs> Christmas trees go up. Uh, so the, these are the kinds of things that cause me problems. So if that house had already had great photography for it, boom, done. But there's a chance I might not get in there and the house won't make it in this next issue. So. Um, one other question about you, Diane, can talk about 2008, we have a recession, prints goes way down here, there's magazines that aren't around anymore. There was a lot of thought that print was dead. I seem to see a resurgence. Is it, is it something you're really seeing that it's really still really strong? I think so, and my publisher is actually in the audience today, and she can talk about this too. Um, you know, I think everyone in publishing just sort of had to stay, take a step back and reevaluate what they were doing. And from my perspective, how it's changed for an editor is that we really are just being asked to do more with less these days. Like everything's kind of pretty much the same. We just don't have as much manpower and money to do the things that we used to do. Um, well, I think print's very much there. I think it's almost like the pendulum swinging back. Um, I can't tell you how many clients have come to me and said, I just landed a client off of the last spread and they had the book in hand when they walked in the door, especially when they look like this. And they are distributed in places where your potential client, your current direction, you have to think about your current direction. Don't show projects that you're not happy about. Put out one or two that year if you have them. Don't shoot everything. Focus on what your current duration. It's it's definitely you have to take steps. Doesn't happen overnight, right? We we put out there where we could put out there in the beginning with Jim or Craig, and you slowly raise that each year and you target that client, that ideal client eventually, with the help of people like Rhonda, their magazine, and so forth. Um, to me, print is strong. Online, you don't get the full magazine, you don't get the full article. Print is very much still there. And probably, in my opinion, coming back great yeah. at this point. Jim, how's it helped your business? Talk about the results of this. You know, uh, I mean, it's, it's really, for us, the last Oh, sorry. The last four or five years is really a uh, game-changing experience for my firm. Uh, we're, I mean, the fees are up. The clients are amazing. We're, we're selecting projects where the clients have a real, you know, passion for architecture, and they have a real understanding about what we're trying to do, and, and we're really just picking those kinds of projects. So we're finally, after, you know, 25 years, it takes a long time. I mean, it takes a long time. So uh, we're, we're able to to do that now and look, and look at each project on its own merits and really look for those projects that we think furthers the cause of what, what it is that we're trying to do, you know, architecturally and, and what we're trying to do for our clients. Uh, it also, the staff, I mean, it's great for the staff, everybody's engaged, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's been, a, it's been quite, the, quite the upgrade for us. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with this. I mean, it was interesting because it took me, I, I just re-engaged Diane and started this, and it took me like six or eight months to get the photography ready. But it's been an overwhelming positive influence in my business. I mean, starting in January of last year, and we'd only been doing it about eight months, I started writing proposals, you know, two and three a week um, to people. And I hadn't done that in my career. And it was, you know, the impact, not all of them came back. And I was actually, you know, they, they, were, they were searching. But I hadn't had that kind of impact in my business in, in being in, in business for 11 years. I hadn't been writing that many proposals. We had a lot of out of state clients starting to find us, which are great. We really have um, good rapport with people who travel. You know, we have one from Rhode Island, one from um, uh, Portland right now. And they found it as a magazine. They came in, would like to talk to you about it. And so that's been really interesting about um, bringing up the scale of architecture and work because they're bringing a different influence. And it's great because they're not around all the time. We're able to do the design work when they're not in the, in the construction, especially when they're just visiting rather than living here. So it's been a big impact. It's also the, the, the biggest benefit to my uh, business is, you know, the publication process has allowed us to get, you know, a brand, as, as you mentioned. Um, the awards process has had a great influence. I have the photography to back it up. I mean, it's really interesting because now I can go in and say, I want to submit this, 
and there's 15 great images that I can select versus before I would be struggling with trying to find 15 images that would tell a story and just listening and seeing what was happening in the design awards program and yes it does have an impact you know a, a positive impact all the way through but I have to go back to the photography it really changed everything and listening listening to the process there is a good investment in this it is my marketing it's my only marketing I don't do the, the vanity press anymore I'd rather pay this group to move me forward rather than going to one direction into a book. And so I've sort of stopped doing the, the pay to pay to publish um, process. I haven't seen much, much positive out of it because the publications kind of do a myriad of whoever wants to advertise in there. It's not necessarily directing it to where I'd like to see. So we've got this time for our questions and, you know, we've got questions and we'll open it up to anyone who has a question in here. Does anyone? Yes, go ahead. look at the nature of the project and you get a plan in place and you the consumer magazines are quite competitive naturally so for instance I wouldn't take a project of Jim's and send it to Rhonda and send it to Carter or vice versa I would pick based on the nature of the project your current direction as a client and we hit them first then you look at maybe your design industry um, a business industry and commercial, you know, commercial, we haven't talked much about commercial design. Same thing with commercial design. You document your project properly and you go to the non-competitive industries, which might be business and commercial. Are you in the school, you know, the school academic industry, you go to those types of public, which I work on commercial as well. It's just a little different than residential. So you don't, you know, in the consumer world, you just don't blast it out there. You respect them. So based on the nature of your project, getting a plan in place first, shooting accordingly, know who you're going to and what they like. Give them that in place and ready to go, and Rhonda will be much happier with you. Any way you can tell, so it's hard to perceive in this stuff. And then secondly, what consideration is given for layout? So I noticed one of your shots looked like it's apt to put the title of the magazine alongside one side to have this feature or this, so it's really nice to have as a front image. Do you do that intentionally or is it required within that submission? So the scale of adding humans in there or, or just something that you can tell, and then the production value of photos, you're, you talk about horizontal versus vertical, but you have to think about, this is a great spot to put the name of the magazine. Let me, let me say too, um, it depends on who you're going to. Like if you're going to dwell, yes, got to have your people. You got to have your lifestyle and your, dog. and your dog. Know your publication. Because sometimes we shoot it with and without people. Okay. We do both. We shoot it for design. We shoot it for consumer. Yes. Design, correct. Correct. And if you plan it, you can do it. I honestly am just, I'm just happy to get through the shoot that day. And after, if I don't have any people, if that's all I got. If I can think about it, to have kids waiting around all day long to show up and get into the, you know, the loft or something, it's really hard to do to bring people in unless it's an urban project. You say, hey, what are you doing? Come over here. You know, you, you want to be in a photograph. Yeah, with people, it's. Uh all the photographs I take for Genzo, we take it both with people and without people, the same shot. Now the people are their own employees. Because remember, if you shoot in public, you don't get to choose who is in a photograph. And if you have your own employees in a photograph, you have better control of who is in the photograph. So, yeah. Now, I think sometimes the photograph looks better with people and sometimes without, you know, it's, um, uh, it's really kind of an individual consideration. They take all of them this way and that way, but not necessarily everybody has to do this the way. The sample of the shots you did show people where you can clearly see them. Yeah. And I see a lot of publications going with an ambiguity of the, it's like a person half walking where you see them. Uh, and it, it's, it's easy because to not tell if they're wearing a Prada shirt or it doesn't really yeah. matter at that point because it's a you know, scale. People are there for scale. You mm -hmm. see, the, the big argument was in the 
that the that object date photographs you know that's why you know th there were people in photographs in the 30s 40s 50s sometimes in the 70s and 80s people disappeared from photographs and it became kind of an abstract vision of the architectural vision uh, and later people came back into photographs to give it scale but the argument against it was that it dates photographs i don't buy this argument so what if it dates a photograph? It doesn't make it any lesser. Uh, personally, I don't like this streaking. I think it's a cliche by now. I prefer to have the people in the photographs being part of the photograph and being... A photograph is about the composition of the objects. There's no question about it. It's a, it's a compositional essay. So. Play, so people become part of the objects and the photographs. They have to have a reason for being there, and they have to reason. They have to have reason for the specific location. That's, uh, and I, I think that the streaking you've seen it so many times it becomes kind of a little bit of a the, blur the, 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 the blurred person. Yeah. Yeah, there's a blurred. I think part of it is you don't can't actually tell if it's a, a man or a woman or if it's a person. It was great when it was novelty, but now the kind of novelty wore off. And so, it's, uh, uh, so I know some publishers want exclusivity. Is that something that's negotiable? If so, how, how do you approach it? Rhonda, you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, um, everybody, every publication has their own guidelines. Um, but I would say most magazines want exclusivity. Um, and then they'll have a time frame sometimes. Yeah. It just depends. It just, yeah, it depends. But then again, that's the respect of pointing and saying, I'm going to go to Modern Luxury. Right. I respect them. They have it for a while. Then I move into the design industry, non-conflicting, your world, maybe the business world, depending on the project, and so forth. Books. Really, a, a good project should not be exhausted, in my mind, for a couple years. I mean, I've worked on certain projects that have gone three years, these are extremely wonderful projects. I think I had seven international covers and 30 articles on one house in Austin. Um, but I had to simply move along strategically to where I did not uh, really overlap uh, anybody's, um, you know, you just really have to be careful with that. But you can move along and you can keep moving along. Uh, with a great project. It should not die after the first spread. There just needs to be an understanding what they need uh, from us until we move further. I wanted to ask about Austin. Let's say you're a first timer. Yeah. Front to back, what is somebody looking at? What are you budgeting for, Jim? Um, you know, it's expensive. So if, um, you know, the, the we budget by, by sort of a, as a percentage of gross revenue each year. We sort of look at how many shoots we're going to have, whether we're advertising or not. But if you're just looking at the photo shoot cost, uh, we try to, we think we're going to spend about two to three percent of gross revenue a year doing photographs, and then we're going to spend another percent or two uh, on mm. advertising or other publications or hosting charity events or anything that falls in the promotional realm. Uh, the, the actual cost of the individual shoots, you know, it's, it's, it depends on the photographer, depends on how long that day is going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the publisher, yeah, so I'm just curious. We're, some of us in here, like myself, are trying to get started in something like that. Right. I mean, I, I might budget, you know, three or $4,000 yeah. for a day shoot, and it's probably yeah. a two-day shoot, you know, more, but I'm not counting my time or my staff's time. I'm not even including that. That's right. just, you know, it goes along with it. But um, I'm also having to send out, I'm paying for, you know, one of the benefits of having a photo shoot is I clean their house. I mean, I'm, I have window washers. I send them out a day in advance. They cost anywhere from 600 to to $1,000 to clean every bit of the glass, and it's spotless. Um, if I have to send lawn crews out so I don't have to do it, I mean, I'll do it. I'm sort of benefiting the, but the, the you know, there's a lot of prep work you go into it. But just working through the, just the photography on a one-day shoot, you know, we probably budget about, you know, $4,000 project just to get you know what we're looking for and it depends on the amount of images yeah and there's that post-production cost you know once drawers gathered the data and now he takes it back to his studio and you're selecting your images that's where the really the rubber hits the road because his time in developing the images that you selected will also add to the cost so mm -hmm. you need to be really careful those need to be powerful images you know, make sure that you're, you're you're picking the right ones and, and 
you know, is there some additional cost just aside from the cost of the photo shoot? I will say it is the investment in my firm for marketing. It's going to bring me more work. I know that. So I do have to look at, wow, it's an ex this might be a tough month. I just know if I stop doing it, I know I saw the direct result in my years of business that when I stopped involving it, boy, things dropped off in a hurry. So the, so the saying, it takes money to make money. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that <laughs> Yes, go ahead. Well, I, I'm not in publishing, but okay. so I'm the shark, which is that right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I just wanted to address the comments that you made about you know, paying to play, because I think that goes back to um, having some education about the publication, a little bit more background information. No credible publication should abide by a pay to play type deal. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's of utmost importance to have a relationship with a reputable publicist and a relationship with the editor, too. That's right. Um, so if the publicist doesn't have the right story for you, but the editor, that's your job, too. So, um, and I think that LaRue is a perfect example. We have an amazing relationship with Jim and Emily out of, I mean, out of Austin, Courtney, as you know, and we have for a number of years. And the combination of editorial with marketing and advertising, they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And then also, just to say, um, print is not dead, Caitlyn Jenner, she did not negotiate to be on the cover website. She took the cover of Vanity Fair. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I've been in this business a, a few years, perhaps longer than some of you all have been around. Uh, and uh, I remember when it was much simpler, and a lot of publications would call me. And I would send them photos and an outline or story or whatever. And of course, that's kind of fallen off. And by the same token, photography is no longer film. You have much more flexibility. There's a much higher level of protection than photography. That's right. Was. And then we're talking about hiring a writer instead of much scribbling something down or an outline. So bottom line, and, and this is both for Diane and for Mona, are because of the time demands in your magazines and your industry and other publicity, uh, are the people that want their things publicized more in the role of preparing and putting everything possible together that they can for the publications? Is that becoming the, the, uh, my responsibility rather than part of the magazine? Is that, is that the way it's going? Um. Well, the magazine will put together the story and hire a writer and do the interviews of the homeowners and the architect and the designer. Um, what you what you have to be prepared to give us is information. Um, you know, the kind of the things we talked about earlier. What are the things that made this project stand out? Um, you know, we might by a site only. It might not be obvious what you know went into this particular construction of this particular element. Um, so and then yeah. you know and making sure the visuals are there yeah. that you're telling the story the closer you get to giving a complete package with good visuals available um telling the story is going to get you closer to that interview assignment mm -hmm. well, the thing is that if you're presenting something for a design award i mean everybody knows the the amount of verbal uh, that you're allowed to give is, is very You know, another point I wanted to make, I really encourage my clients to help the publications along a little bit with, I like to provide not only the story that we're pitching with the visuals, but they need advertisement dollars. Give them who did what. Product placement. Product placement. Not necessarily a consultant, but product companies and know the magazine and give them outlets to go for advertising as well because absolutely and I I am doing that more and more trying to encourage because I get it they got to keep it going but yet product companies and those types of companies need advertising yes 
Yes. Let's see, that's a good one. <laughs> First of all, architects are my love, <laughs> um, as far as the architecture world goes. And I am really, at my point in career, very interested in working directly with individuals, small firms that have a story to tell. I'm always been tagged as the one looking for the story that hasn't been told, because there's a lot of great work happening in Texas, as we know right now. There's a lot of young voices or voices that haven't been heard. I want to hear that. So I look for interesting stories. I look for interesting projects that I can hand off to my editors who will appreciate uh, bringing that story to them. So it just, I'm select, but I'm also open and hopefully approachable. I don't want to seem not approachable because of the word publicist. Yeah. Well, I've tried to make it a little bit more um, easy to understand the rates. I can sign you on by a single project. There's a retainer that's put down, and as we get published, you pay me. There's no hourly fee. Also, if you have a number of projects, you basically hire me on for the year. There's unlimited submissions. We plan it, I consult, we shoot them, and we move forward. You pay me a monthly increment, and that increment is based on your work and your back pocket as far as what you can afford. I work very different than other publicists, I will say that, because I do like, I realize firms are starting out, and individuals in art. I also represent artisans. I have a mosaic tile artist that I represent in Fredericksburg. So anybody in the architecture world I'm interested in working with and helping, but my rates, I have no set rate. It depends on the amount of work you have and what we need to do to get it out there. No faking. <laughs> but it does matter. You know, the, the landscape is a critical aspect, I think, for most of the magazines. You've come this far, you know, another three or four months to get it really right because of the cost. You know, it's expensive. So, so, you know, you, you, you can, you can, you really can, you can wait. You, you need, it needs to be right. Uh, especially if that's an important part of your story. <coughs> Go do the interiors first. <laughs> Prepped it, he drove up, and here he goes. 
you know, the, the architect has his head down going, oh no, there's Christmas tree lights stapled to everywhere on that. And like, you do start pulling yeah. things down. Yeah, so, I was no. waiting right and I was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is not a good time of year. <laughs> Unless you're doing a Christmas story. <laughs> I think the collaboration is key. You need uh, you need some help. You need to look into a photographer you can build a relationship with today. Let him or her guide you. Uh, An experience is key. Uh, photography can get very tricky today with digital. It needs to be realistic, and it, the photographer needs to be good on post production. nice when somebody comes in and they have a dwell magazine and say, build me this, but how else, is it your responsibility to track, is it the publicist, how do you track where the return on investment is truly boomeranging back to you, where that $5,000, $10,000 photo shoot really netted a client, because well, unless they come in with a dwell magazine, you don't know whether they saw it in Lux or the uh, industry magazine, Texas Architect perhaps? We ask mm -hmm. every client that comes okay. in the door, you know, where, how did you find us? And, and sometimes it happens, like, like Diane said earlier, a guy, we're, we have a meeting Tuesday to sign a client who found us while he was on vacation in Santa Fe, reading a Western art and architecture to do a house in Austin, Texas. So that's how it's <laughs> supposed to work. Now you know an immediate return on that investment. So uh, you just have to ask them, it's, and it's okay. I think most of the people I've asked are happy to tell the story about how they found you. How strategically have you found that the direct source are, are better Well, there is, but you know, I think these more public commercial magazines are, are, for me, have been better than the trade journal stuff. We, we get published in trade journals and that's fine. It's helpful because it brings you to the technical side. So you, you might meet a builder, you might meet a contractor or an artisan or someone, uh, but we- Especially in the residential. In a residential. Commercial, you have a whole different uh, group of magazines and, I, and, and, and on my commercial clients, depending on the nature of the project, we reach out to those, who is the superintendent, you know, as far as academic, what magazines are they reading? And we go to those. So commercial is slightly different than residential, um, but you do need to in commercial hit the business side as well as design. I'll I will tell you what we've done from a numbers, pure number standpoint. We say, okay, this year we're gonna budget 3%. Then when that comes around in the next year, then our numbers need to be up more than 103%. So assuming the market doesn't tank, mm -hmm. we, we would see the return on either the fees raised or the quantity of work changed. And so we're able to gauge it against what the dollar volume into the firm fl flow is from having been published. And if we've seen it falling the other way, then we were thinking, oh, we're, we're either advertising too much or the message is bad or something is wrong and we need to adjust. So it can be quantified. I haven't done it yet. I'm, I'm just catching up. I'm just doing whatever Diane says to do. So <laughs> well, you didn't mention everything that in the last couple of years where you've been, you know, all the design awards well, and all the articles. It's been a good year because, I mean, we, we, with the photography, Indoor has been really successful. I'm also listening to the photographer saying, you know, Indoor is really great about going and sitting in the design award programs, the all afternoon thing and watching it and coming back. Here's some critique and some input. It is a just a selection of photography. I mean, it's really difficult and it's very arbitrary and it's disheartening at times because we've struck out for years, but we've had a really good year. We've had a, re a really fantastic year this year. And it's really, because I'm looking through it, like Diane looks at it, like Ron is looking at it. I'm going, I know who the jurors are. I can see what their work is like. I'm going to give them this imagery that hopefully hooks them enough that holds it in there just enough. I can't say that Design Awards brings more work. I can't say that at all. It's just been kind of a benefit of doing this. I have this and it's been a great return. Um, to be able to say, yeah, it, it's worth the effort because here it's being recognized. Yeah. Uh, There's a question on the back of the <laughs> um, Do you have any client issues that come up? Can you address that a little bit? Do you ever have uh, someone not want to photograph their house for security or? Uh... Uh, yeah, you know, we, we try to respect that. We need to be pretty vague about where it is, even in the article sometimes. Yes. It's a little bit of a challenge. 
but some, and the publishers seem to like those articles where the clients will engage. However, if, even if they won't, if it's strong, they'll still take it and they'll still publish it and respect the, the privacy of the client. Uh, we have it in our contract. So we have publication rights written into our contract up front, so they know it's going to happen. Right. And, and it's, but it's a conversation we have early on, and most of them are very excited to do it. So I think if you just address it in the front end, you what get a lot of What is that the, the expense of the home usually has a lot more privacy. I mean, of course, they have art, they have furniture, and all of a sudden, someone can look at this and go, I know exactly where everything is in this house. We also have a very aggressive taxing agency in San Antonio that they will actually scan these things to do evaluations on property. So we have a lot of clients that just say, we're not interested. Um, a lot of people are really flattered. They're really interested. Most clients are saying, I'd like to see that the effort that we put in here, going through the process of hiring the design team to do it, it's worthwhile and most of our clients are really excited. But I have had some say, absolutely not. And um, you know, I'm not interested whatsoever. And it's, it's becoming a pretty strong theme and a lot of projects right up front and we're not interested in, in you showing it, especially home tours. When you have a thousand people walk through your house yeah, and they know one. exactly where everything 3, 000, is. Three thousand, yeah. It's written, that's what we see in San Antonio. It's becoming harder and harder to get clients to say, I've, I've had many of them to say, I'm just not interested in that. But I'm just going hoping that there's that. And usually it's my own house. I can, the only way I can do it is I do a house my, for myself and then say, come on, and, you know, come on through. Well, I had a question for uh, Diane, actually. What kind of guidance are you giving firms about Exposure on, on things like house and Pinterest and everything else that are you know require a little bit of discipline on, on our end, whoever's posting it, but because of the kind of the retail nature of those sites and, and how it, it's got to be a, a nightmare for, for the print media people, but it's also it, you know, tool. I wouldn't put when, when you have a job photograph for print or you have a specific direction, you don't want to blast it out there. You hold on to it for a little while. I'm getting, I'm not really a house fan. It's become more of a mass hole <laughs> of, of project. And the photography is not good most of the time. So I am strictly editorial. And I'm probably going to remain that. Uh, there is online publication that I do as well for online. But blogging, Pinterest is great. Pinterest is visual. Uh, house is sort of up and down right now with the number of my clients, the expense and the return. There's not much return for them. Did you have a comment on that also? Yes, please. Mm. What do you think, Jim? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, it started out, house was a pretty neat little concept. But there were a lot of good images, architects were loading things up, had a nice search engine because clients could search by parameter. So you know, there was a lot good about that. Then all of a sudden it made this shift. International. And now we see green tags on all our photographs and lamps and things are, it's, we're pulling back. A lot of our clients come to the office and I've heard that question about how'd you find us and some of them says, well, we found you on house. Uh, so I, I, we're struggling with that. We don't know whether to maintain that house presence. Uh, we probably will. We're gonna bleed out the secondary images. We're not gonna put anything in there that's meaningful to us, uh, uh, you know, from a print standpoint. But until we see that taper off or somebody else comes in, AI would be nice to, yes, you know, if we could do AI, it through crayon yeah. or something, that would be fantastic. Uh, you know, I know control. it's expensive and there's a search engine problems there, but, but uh, we, we're keeping our eye on house very, very closely. Well, we do, like Craig, we're doing stuff in Boston and Charleston and Nashville, and, and they're not, they haven't been in our product. So they're finding us online. So they're still really good clients, even though they didn't come for referral. But, you, you know, probably if half our work comes from referral based, and the rest is to be from any, any source. So there's still great clients on both sides of that equation. So I wouldn't write that off just because, you know, they may be reaching out to you through house. So I agree with you, the house clients generally are, are you know, a lot of times more remodel projects, and, and if that's your business, yeah. that works beautifully. But but for us, and, and, not so. and we did the same. We're canceling our pay. It, it has hard. worked, and it hasn't, right? We'll get the we'll get the inquiries of how much of center blueprints and yeah. how much you know. So you kind of understand really quickly if this is going to work or not. Um, there is a component of the online thing that we're really 
starting to engage, and I've been asking Drawer and Diane and other people, the SEO stuff. I mean, when D Drawer, it, I always like a photographer who's advertising our work. People can actually find us through his website, can find us through Diane's website, and the more we link together, the more we skyrocket in Google search engine. All of our names come up, they look for a certain project, boom, 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 and it also brings the magazine if it's, if it's posted. So there is something about having a team that you're working with, because I'm, and I'm just researching it right now, I'm, a lot of people want me to sign up and pay for them to solve this problem, but it's it's this SEO sort of optimization, the name of your image versus just image number 712-4 or whatever, <laughs> you're actually giving a title, this is a, you know, whatever at night, and you know, you're, you're giving it a title, it makes a huge difference. And house obviously is, is met, um, meta tags, you know, you're just gonna type in keywords. Google is not, I mean, they've dropped it. In fact, they've intentionally dropped it um, from basically doing, so there is something coming that I'm just sort of watching and seeing what's happening because the more I link, the more you start skyrocketing. I can't really, every time I get the phone call, would you like to sign up for us SEO optimization? I say, can you show me this is gonna bring me more work? I mean, are you gonna, do you have any, it's so new, they can't say this is gonna bring you money. Um, but it's, so House is sort of, it's its own thing and we have found a lot of work, you know, the people they work, at least it has a conversation, it brings us a conversation. So I, I agree, my deal with House and when they call me is that I can do just about everything I want for free. I don't know what, application so I immediately call all you people and say are you seeing any any uh, connection so feel free to contact us if you think something is working or not because it's, I think it's a great networking tool for all of us say what is working it's different for us as architects normally people are finding you because of you and they will find you no matter what you don't really need to go through the paid aspect um, but I do think the advertising side of like, promoting your brand is huge I mean keeping you constantly going so people are seeing that things are fresh and they're coming and you can control the content on your yeah, advertising page <laughs> Anything else? We've one, one minute over um, our time. If you guys um, want to take off and try to, you know, make feed the traffic, or if you're um, have any other on. questions, come on up here and then talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please take, 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 take. Yes. Uh, of course I do. I think we have a great story. Great work.